guys and gals, and Ari here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's some of you may on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at another Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale, Jesse's Rejection Path. Anyway, y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up. We've got bronze for $5, silver for $10, and gold for $15, respectively, each with their own exclusive rewards and permanent access to our community Discord server. We've already got some members in the, in the server now, y'all. Membership is as low as $5, and whatever you pay, you're in there permanently. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> Game, what are you doing? Game, what are you doing? You're being weird. Y'all see this? This is bizarre. What's going on? Uh... Hey y'all, and we're back. No idea what that was. Uh, the game just kind of froze up, I guess. Anyway, let's go ahead. I take a short breath and try to shake myself out of it. The memories are still fresh, maybe too fresh. Hopefully time will settle my mind, but I fear what I'll do until that day comes. I dream about terror and love, and occasionally find myself wondering if there's even a difference. Alrighty. On to the next day, it seems. I always, I always love their transition to the next sign. Oh yeah, they had a uh, Changeling Tale booth at Anthrocon. Uh, my friend Rashawn uh, sent me a few pictures. Pretty cool. Oh my god. There we go. Another beautiful day in the Vale. It's proving to be quite a warm and dry May. Perhaps Mother Nature is ready to move on from the doom and gloom of the last few years as well. The morning's chores are done and the sun is already high in the sky. Having tended to Hazel in the herd, I can finally move on to something more productive. It's as good as time as any to start training my erasable little mare. I lead her from the stable to a small paddock, where we can get to work. Now, my dear, let's get you geared up and see if we can teach you a wee bit of obedience. Oh, God, the horse is not found. What happened? Oh, my God, Hazel. <laughs> Hazel snorts defiantly as I fasten the cavison and make sure that her, that her surcingle is not too tight. Take hold of the line and begin trying to lead her clockwise in a circle. I would have more luck leading a field leading a field boulder by the reins. Come, Hazel, none of that. You've done this before, so let's go. Shaking the shaking the cavasun line is no use, nor is tugging. Pretty please? She neighs stubbornly. I sigh, wishing now I had a second trainer like we did in cavalry school. It's up to me to do the job of both. I hold the line with one hand while flipping the granddad's old chambray with the other. I immediately regret it. Chambrero has the effect of animating the horse a little too well. Hazel lunges forward, pulling free of my light grip on the reins. She's hopped over the stone wall and is bolting toward the log before I can blink. Cursing, I give chase. Hmm. Aw, oh, there you go. Thankfully, Hazel doesn't run too far. She slows to a halt on a bluff overlooking the lock, where she stoops to graze on a patch of bluebells. Yeah, she looks happy. Not. Ah! I make my way across the field to retrieve my mare, tiptoeing up to her, but she bucks and darts off again. Into the hands of a young blonde girl who effortlessly calms the horse in no time flat. Is this yours? Hmm. You're damn right. The girl comes closer, smirking and leading Hazel through the pasture. She looks familiar. Grace? Yes, Malcolm. Yes, Malcolm. That's me. My sisters mentioned you were back. It's nice to see you again. It's certainly been a long time. It has. Truth be told, I have very little memory of the youngest McLeod sister. Even when our families got together, she tended to be scarce and I struggled more for, for more words. Ah, you look so much older. As do you. And this is... Hazel, the one and a thankfully only. I'm amazed you are able to calm her. She's not usually very tolerant to strangers. It looks like she's not very tolerant of her owner either. You ought to keep a closer hold on her. Seems as though she'd rather be running loose than being led by the reins. Yes, well, she's not exactly enjoying her relaxing farm life. Grace's expression changes, and I sense she has some sympathy for my horse's plight. Perhaps she'd rather be wild and free. I mean, I can see that. Also, I wonder if Hazel is like an actual person, and not just a horse. That's what I wonder. She's feisty. I like it. Feisty, like you wouldn't believe. I suppose I should get her back to the farm. Second, y'all. It is water time. Let me crack this sucker open. Yeah, there we go. Hmm. All right. Yeah, she'll follow you. I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure she's interested in where you're leading her. 
Sometimes we don't have a choice about where we go, or who we go with, do we? I reach for the reins and Grace passes them to me after a moment's hesitation. I suppose. Goodbye, Malcolm. She turns without another word and begins walking toward the water. I wonder, I wonder at a girl who can both seem so sullen yet confident. What a strange girl. Be seeing you, Grace. Thanks for your help. The horse is just staring at him. Tugging Hazel back towards the stable. I think back on what I've heard about the youngest sister. Wondering if they're... Wondering if she isn't just terribly lonely and bored on the farm all day. Best not to overthink it, though. Much is left to be done today, and my mind can't bear any additional burdens. Back at the homestead, my first order of business is to put poor Hazel in a paddock with plenty of space. She seems to tolerate the accommodations well enough, but I keep a weather but I keep a weather eye on her at all times just in case. The much needed patches to the stable roof keep me busy as the do as the day draws on. It's one less thing for Hazel to hold against me, at least. Nope. Wow, day changed pretty quick. The sun is already setting when Grandmother calls me back in for supper. I kick myself for losing track of time. The day has passed. I've not eaten, and my hands are sore and callous from all the hard work. I wash up, change my clothes, and sit down to enjoy a hearty meal with Agnes. But apparently even a good scrub can't hide my fatigue. Dear, you look exhausted. Did the day's labors not agree with you? You don't know the half of it. We commiserate about the stubbornness of beasts and talk long into the evening. Hmm. Eventually, we both find ourselves yawning and rest beckons us. It looks as though the bed is calling you, Gran. Aye, I'll retire for now. You let... let you... let you to your evening routine. I wink and tilt my head towards the bottle of scotch by the sink. You know you're welcome to partake in the ritual. Maybe a wee dram. I grab the bottle and glasses, and we sip together in silence until Grand denies a refill. I've had my fill. Any more tipsy and I myself will need to be poured into bed. The muscles argue a little as I lift myself out of the chair, and protest harder, st harder still as Grand gives me a tight embrace. Sleep well, Gran. I'll see you when the rooster crows. Good night, Malcolm. May the fairies only slip you peace-filled dreams. I chuckle, reminded of childhood fairy tales, as Agnes retires to her room. I'm busying myself with the dishes when I hear a light knock on the door. Who in the world would be calling at this hour? Mm hmm Malcolm! Malcolm, is that you? A tall woman stands before me in the cool evening air. She's most definitely the flaxen-haired woman I had noticed at the market today, and my former school teacher. Her face is somber and frozen with worry, but she cracks a faint smile at my appearance. Miss Alana, how are you? I reach out to give her a gentle embrace, so the measure is hardly reciprocated as she nearly pulls away. You remember me? Oddly enough, she does not look like she aged at all since I first saw her in the classroom so long ago. Of course I do. It's nice to see you. You as well. The whole village is thankful to have you back, myself included. You must be you must come in to warm up. It's mighty late to be strolling out this way. She shakes her head and pulls the lapels of her long green gown tightly around her neck. Her piercing eyes stare boldly, almost invasively, into me. No, I shan't be staying long, Malcolm. I came especially to see you. She hesitates, and her gold hair shines in the moonlight, bringing out the blonde highlights. You know, everyone is relieved that you're home safe. You're home safe and sound. Second, y'all. It is water time. Hmm. God, I can't believe I'm start playing this back in 2021 that's insane thank you uh i'm sorry well uh, malcolm your voice thank you it continues to be pleasant to hear it's good to be home yes everyone is pleased including the cloud girls you you've spoken with them i take a pause at the sudden specificity specificity her brow furrows and she rubs her arms for warmth you've crossed paths since i've returned yes there are neighbors after all are you sure you don't want to come inside and CERN is written all over her I'd appreciate the warmth more than she would, it seems. I want to ask if she's alright, but instinct guides me otherwise. No, thank you, I just... Yes? You need to know. Need to know what? It's best if you stay away from them. Her words take me completely by surprise. It takes me a moment to find my bearings. Why on earth would you say that? Is there something wrong? She begins speaking very fast and very concisely, as if rehearsed. Please, don't ask me. It's a private matter. One I ought not to even speak about. Just 
Just know I am looking out for everyone's best interests. I'm at a loss for words. This is the side of Miss Alana I'd hoped to never see again. As a teacher, she was at once kind, gentle, and stern. Learning came easily through her methods of education. She was joyous and heartfelt in the classroom, but always knew when to raise her voice and chastise her boisterous, youthful behavior. And occasionally, for no reason, she would become very serious, very superstitious, over the smallest of things, even as a child. Even as a child, I viewed it as strange behavior. And outside of school, well, it was as if she was an entirely different person, a mournful and isolated woman when she was seen at all. It made life uncomfortable for a child who otherwise adore, adores as a normally cheerful teacher. What did she become now? Can you share with me why? Are they in danger? What has you so worried? That's not something I can speak aloud. Not now. Please, trust me. Respect my wishes and those of the girls. I'm overwhelmed with confusion. Is it their wish not to see me? Not exactly. They are just... are not prepared to ask you to stay away. Malcolm, listen to me. Please, look in my eyes. Her eyes are dark with desperation and sadness even while reflecting the moon's glow. A darkness sweeps over the sky, black as the Earl of Hell's waistcoat. The bright moon is clouded over. It is because I care for you and them that have come here tonight. They may seem like harmless girls, but outward appearances can be deceiving. Family secrets run deep. Don't get too close to them. Know you've been asked in earnest. Please stay away from the clouds. I've never seen such intensity from Miss Alana. Whatever her reason, she's clearly distressed, so I decide to appease her. Don't worry. I respect their space. Thank you for coming by. But now, I should really be getting back to... Oh, you've given me such relief, Malcolm! She moves closer as if to embrace again. I rarely step back, and in doing so, realize I may have offended her. I... And now I must be on my way. I'm sorry. Please take care, Miss Alana. Hope to catch up with you soon, perhaps in brighter circumstances. I point to the shaded moon. She nods, and as if on cue, the clouds part. Of course. Please... Give my best to your grandmother. She steps away from the door and demurely waves goodbye. Good night, Malcolm. I watch her as she walks away. Her silhouette shrinks and I can't help but wonder what has her so distraught. Eventually she veers off the path and deeper into the hill crossing, disappearing among the jagged boulders. I shiver and tell myself it's because of the draft. Inside, I warm, I warm myself with one more drink from the now near empty bottle of scotch. I don't realize how tense I am until I reach for the glass. The first sip eases the tension, but not my nerves. Agnes ducks out of her room. I believe she can read my concern as I pour myself into another drink. Is all well? Was someone at the door, dear? I lift my glass and polish off the whiskey, resolving to put the strange encounter behind me. There's nothing, Gran. Under my breath, I add. Just a ghost from the past. Take some water, y'all. Hmm. Some good shit right there, boy. Okay. The smell of fresh baked pastry drifts out the main room. I come in to find Grand stirring a pot at the stove. Good morning. How did you sleep? I feel like I've hardly slept at all. Well, enough. Well enough, I guess. Something smells good. She points to a basket of muffins on the table. The steam wafts around them as they cool. I baked some fresh treats for the McLeod girls since they've helped. Since they've helped make your reception home a warm one. Won't you be a dear and take these over to them? My uncomfortable conversation with Alana is still fresh, although I don't want to worry my grandmother. Still. Gran, have you heard anything, well, odd about the McLeod girls? Odd? What do you mean? The girls. Has, any, has anything ever seemed off? Why ever would you ask that? I've known them to be nothing but good. Gran hesitates. But? Malcolm, I've lived a long, full life. This town is a past. Secrets that aren't meant to be uncovered. Not everything is as it seems. I'm stupefied. Now Gran is giving me riddles, too. It almost sounds like the opening to one of the fairy tales she would read to me as a wee lad. What? What does that mean? God willing, you'll never have to find out. Quickly now, while the muffins are still warm. Breakfast should be ready as soon as you return. Before I know it, I find myself shooed out the door, alone with a basket of muffins and a baker's dozen of questions in my head. What are Gran and Alana talking about? In all my years, I've never noticed anything unusual in this sleepy hamlet, apart from Alana herself. Maybe Agnes is getting superstitious, too, in her old age. Should I let, her, should I let their superstition stand in the way of being a good neighbor? Be a good neighbor. <laughs> I answered itself. I shelved my concerns and tell myself that I can press for some answers on my return. 
I make it to the McLeod's house in no time. Marion is standing at the door, almost as if she's waiting for me. She waves me over. Oh. Alright guys and gals, it looks like I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see y'all next time. Don't forget to check out the Patreon, y'all. Bye-bye!